Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're talking CA1, chapter 18, which is collective investment schemes. So what are we going to get through in this chapter? Well, we're going to look at an introduction. We're then going to look at what is an investment trust company. We're then going to look at unit trust, their differences, um, an open-ended um, investment company, the advantages of collective investment schemes, and the disadvantages of collective investment schemes. Now you have two types of collective investment schemes. The one is close-ended, the other is open-ended. Close-ended means that once money has been raised, the fund then closes, and an open-ended um, scheme is where managers can create or cancel units in the fund as new money is invested or withdrawn. Now, this is going to make much more sense when we get into it, but one important thing to realize is with collective investment schemes is that there is quite a lot of regulation around this. So, And the regulation can specify what assets can be held, um, whether unquoted assets can be held, how much gearing is allowed, and are there any tax benefits. But what we have are are two types of collective investment schemes and their names are a little bit confusing because they both have the word trust in them and they're not really trusts. But let's look at what an investment trust company is. Okay. Um, well, they both have stated investment objectives, uh, but the investment trust company is close-ended. It has a board of directors, investment managers, and the shareholders. And you can get... Um, a discount or a premium on the net asset value of the shares and it's a public company it's governed by company law and gearing is allowed so what this is is you go to a company you say here's my money go and invest it for me and what you're doing is you're effectively buying into an investment company like I said it is confusing that they use the word trust because we have the unit trust here which they are like, I guess they are like a trust. It's trust is a very open word. But anyway, what a unit trust is, it's got a state investment objectives, the same as this one. It's open ended, which means more money can come into it, more money can be withdrawn, you know, the units can be created and destroyed. Um, you have your trustees, your investment managers, and your unit holders. You buy units at the net asset value, and it's governed by trust law. But the big thing is that no gearing is allowed. Now, a little, just so that we know where this is all being used, an investment trust company is kind of like a company where you go and you take your money to invest in, and there, are, there might be a branch of a bank or a bunch of accountants or something like that, and they, they money managers. Whereas a unit trust could be with a life insurance company, it's part of your savings component, and that's why you'll see it's much more, they're normally less risky, and that's why there's no gearing. But like I said, this is just very broad categories. And we're going to even see later how you can blend the two together. So let's look at what are the advantages. Well, a unit trust is more marketable and has more stability. Um, however, an investment trust company it can get higher returns. You can buy it at a bargain. Um, has lower charges, and there's wider variety. And as far as tax goes, well, that's very much dependent on the territory that you are living in. Um, then you get something called an open-ended investment company. And this is almost like the two had a, had a love child, and this is their, their offspring. So it's a cross between them. It's open-ended, but it's priced at the net asset value. Uh, entry and exit charges are explicit. It's a public company governed by company law. But the interesting thing is that it is open-ended. And that's just, you know, if you've done accounting in the past, you'll see where the benefits are to having it as open-ended. Um, but let's just look at the advantages of investing indirectly because essentially that's what both of these collective investment schemes are. It's for somebody who comes in and doesn't really know what they're doing on the stock market or whatever the asset class is. And they say, here's my money, please go and manage it for me. 
and the company or the trust or whatever it is, they'll say, thanks for your cash. We're going to diversify it into various assets. We're going to chop it up nicely so it's very divisible. This makes it very marketable. We're going to give you quoted prices and valuations. The expense is, is going to be less because you know we've got expertise and economies of scales. And um, there might even be the advantage if the stock market is you know going through a recession then you can buy this at uh, a discount to the net asset value so you actually get an asset a little bit cheaper and you have access to larger and more unusual investments it's very similar to that whole property indirect investments that we looked at last time and just like how there were the many advantages there were also the disadvantages of indirect investments and that is you kind of lose control you kind of lose the ability to do personal gearing um, by going in with these guys, you are correlated with equities. So if you're trying to get that diversification across asset classes, you are going to lose. It. So if you can, you can buy into weird and wonderful assets, but because it's an investment uh, company and the stock market goes down, you're also going to be correlated and also come down. You also have to pay management charges because these people don't just do this stuff for free. And management charges are interesting because they're quite high. I think they're too high for what they are. But that's another discussion. And what you're also doing is you're introducing a lot more volatility and there might be tax disadvantages for doing so. But like I said, tax could be a pro or a con. It very much depends on what country you live in. But yeah, that was a very short introduction to collective investment schemes. Um, basically, just take away from this, it's an idea where it's a separate entity that invests for you and these are the disadvantages, these are the advantages. Thanks for watching, and next time we're going to be looking at overseas markets, which is quite fun. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, but yeah, thanks, and all the best with the study. Cheers.